By the way, my hair is usually curly But because I used to straighten it so much when I had it long It doesn't want to curl up right now Ooh. How do YouTubers take thumbnails? Seriously It's fucking hot outside And you know what? I know you're thinking Why are you wearing long sleeves if it's hot outside? Because I don't like to burn my arms, yo that's it. Hi guys, my name is Monica and welcome back to my channel, Mini Reads, where I talk about books and things. And this is my summer recommendations for people that don't read YA contemporary romances. I feel there's a plethora of videos out there for you guys if you want to have that whole romantic beachside contemporary read. But if you're like me and you're like, Nah, I don't like that. I've got some books here to recommend for you because I got you, babe. Somebody should put me in jail. So I have these books divided by category. So I will put leave the, the times down here in case you're not interested in any of these categories or if you're only interested in one of them. And that way, you know, I save you time and what well, what a good book to am I? <laughs> I'm gonna go with and I'm guessing the category most people are gonna skip but I hope you don't is some nonfiction now I have here some nonfiction reads that I think would be great reads for the summer let's start with the obvious one Time on Wales by Nick Pison I see a theme here the books are either refreshing or they're like dark and muggy and stuff so the first one I want to recommend is uh, Spying on Whales. And as it says, it's basically a book about how little we know about whales and how we find out more about them. And when I say more, it's about the 1% little bit that we know. So yeah, this is a really good read. It's a really short read. I think it's, it's less than 250 pages. Yeah, it's less than 250 pages. You can get through this in one afternoon. And if you're like me and live in the middle of the fucking desert where there's no beach, this will make you feel like you're there. I'm gonna recommend this in every fucking video, but <laughs> Soul of an Octopus. I recommend this for the same reasons that I recommend Buying on Whales. Oh, this is by Simon Gomery, by the way. You can see it right there. I recommend this because it talks about aquatic creatures. It talks about aquariums. It talks about going deep sea diving, looking for octopuses. And I think that that's really awesome. And I think that that's like such a refreshing read for the horrible summer months when it's really hot. And also it's a great beach read. Like if you are not like me that didn't realize she was moving to the middle of nowhere. I live in the capital of Spain. It's not the middle of nowhere, but it's literally in the middle of Spain, you know, so like there's no beaches. But this is a great beach read. It's got amazing photos of aquatic life. And I don't know, I just think that this would be so great with like, you know, a couple ice cold cucumber water and just like by the poolside. So there you go. Now, if the beach isn't your thing and you're more into, I don't know, the desert, I guess, <laughs> I would recommend Born Free by Joy Adamson. Now, this is the story of Elsa the Lion and Joy Adamson, who actually raises Elsa and then releases her back into the wild. It's a beautiful story. It's got the most amazing pictures. And I, and I feel like when you see these pictures, it, it just makes me feel like summer vibes. Look at that, like like the way they're dressed and she describes the heat a lot. So I feel like the, the, this is such a great summer read. And again, all three of these books are wonderful if you are into animals and wanna read more about animals and emotions and stuff like that and don't wanna hear about poaching. <laughs> because a lot of people seem to think that like Non-fiction books about animals will have some kind of poaching element to it. And I'm like, no, why, why would I recommend that? I wouldn't do that. So those are the non-fiction reads that I read. Next up, we have a category that I like to call This Is What Monica Loves, and it's called sci-fi. So let's start off with two sci-fi that are that are on my summer TBR. And that one of them is Who Fears Death? God, just look at this cover. Doesn't this cover make you feel like summer? I guess yes, it does to me because desert, it's got a lot of desert colors and everything. And look at the back. It's just like a big sun 
so it just makes me feel like summer now this is a really sad book and major trigger warnings for rape but basically this is a woman wanders the African desert after surviving rape at the hands of an enemy general and the brutal annihilation of her village and it's set in a po post-apocalyptic Sudan the light-skinned Nuro oppressed the dark-skinned Okiki and this powerful award-winning novel is currently being developed by HBO with J.R.R. Martin, author of Song and blah, 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 whatever, as an executive producer. But basically, yeah, desert, feeling the heat. I, 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 when I am as hot as I am right now, I like to read descriptions about characters being hot because I'm like, I get it, I get it. So yeah, this one is on my TBR for the summer. So if you like Nettie Aqua Force writing, then this could be on your TBR too. Then we have one book that you've already heard me talk about, so I'm only going to branch him briefly, and that is Born by Jeff Vandermeer. Again, I love the nature element in this. I love how, to me, summer is icky and sticky. Like, I feel sticky right now. And I like how he describes these characters feeling icky and sticky and how it's not like, I don't know, winter seems crisp and white and like, you kind of want to bundle up in a blanket and like, like right now, just even saying those words, Mm -mm. And I feel this is such a great summer read. It's got a very tropical vibe to it. it they are in like they they are they describe their surroundings as very tropical. The main character is from what I believe to be a Caribbean island, or maybe it's the Fiji Islands because I know Jeff Vandermeer grew up in the Fijis. So you know you've heard me rant and rave about this. I'm gonna put it down now. <laughs> And the next book I want to recommend for the summer in the sci-fi category is Rosewater by Tate Thompson. Now, this book, I believe, is kind of the same, how do you call it, tropical plants taken over, stuff like that. And I'd love to read about that in the summer because if you don't know, I grew up in Venezuela. Venezuela is has part of the Amazon. I didn't grow up near the Amazon, but I did grow up in a very tropical place. So in my mind, in Venezuela, it's always summer, you know? So in my mind, anything that is kind of tropical-ish reminds me of Venezuela. So it reminds me of summer. I don't know a lot about this book and I want to go in like that, just not knowing a lot. But just in case you're, you're wondering, it's Nigeria 2066, the hopeful and the helpless congregate around an alien biodome seeking salvation. Rosewater is a town on the edge. And this is the winner of the inaugural Nomo Award, Africa's first award for speculative fiction. What? Go pick this book up. What are you doing? Go, go pick it up. And the final book I want to recommend in the sci-fi category is The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. And I also want to throw in here the subsequent sequels to this book because I feel like the way the worlds in this book are described are again i think there's a, a something to be said about the idea that everything is going hotter the closer we get to the future <laughs> you know it's not going to be like a cold desolate landscape but a really hard desert like place and they they do talk about these worlds that have turned to desert because what we can guess is human overconsumption of natural materials and resources so yeah, I really like this and I think that this is just a great book to read. This is like a year-round book to read. I don't know, it just seems like such a nice, nice book to get to for the summer. In case you don't know what this is about, by the way, this is about a crew. <laughs> it's about a crew of space explorers that punch holes into space so that we can get like highways to get through one point to another quicker. And really what this book is about is about fan families, about the differences that separates us but then that bring us closer as a people so next up i'm gonna call this my dark books you want to read during the summer and the first one that i want to recommend is interview with the vampire this book describes being hot and sticky like anything i've ever read in my life and also i just like the fact that it's a vampire book but it feels so hot <laughs> and not hot like Ew, steamy hot no you read it like I remember reading this I read this a couple of summer ago and I remember thinking wow this is exactly how I feel right now like I feel I'm in the middle of the Louisiana Bayou when I read this so I recommend this in case you don't know this this book is about the vampire Lestat and Lestat finds this man named Louis and he kind of falls for him in a weird vampiric way 
and he offers him the ability to forget his past because Louis has a really troubled, really sad past. And Louis takes it and then he wishes he didn't because his left dad is a fucking nut bag. <laughs> He's something else. Less dad. But I love less dad, so uh, that says a lot about me. Moving on, the next book in this dark kind of scary kind of I don't know I don't know what to call this thriller I'm gonna call it dark thriller category is sharp objects by Gillian or Gillian I never know how to say it Flynn I hate the stupid thing that says the author of Gone Girl this is the story of Camille Preaker Camille Preaker comes from a small town in, in Missouri and she has to go back there one summer in a very hot summer to write an article about a murder that happened there and this again wow it's like it's so it's described so well how like hot this character feels throughout this whole thing that it's really really unnerving and i think it really goes with the theme of summer as you can see for me summer is not the happiest time <laughs> Just major trigger warnings if you don't know about this, if you haven't seen the HBO show, this has a lot of mention of self-harm and self-mutilation. So just, just be aware if you go into that. And if you don't want to go into this one, I would actually recommend another one of her novels called Dark Places. I don't have the physical copy of that one, but I think it does give you that same like hot summer icky i want to take off my clothes but not in a sexy way vibe and as a like little extra the show that is on hbo of sharp objects it's beautiful but again please be sure that you feel safe watching it if you have had issues with cutting or any kind of self mutilation before because it's very very well done in the show and it can be very very triggering so watch out take care of yourself first mental health comes first next up again this is a very strange thing for me to recommend but i want to recommend this classic and it's the iliad and i have the version translated by carolina alexander i still haven't read this i have read the iliad translated by other people before because i studied art history this is basically required reading for art history so um, the Iliad is the story of the Trojan Wars. It's basically a war. <laughs> okay, there's more to it than that. Let me let me read the back. <laughs> High in Olympus, the gods look down on the city of Troy, where a bitter and bloody war drags on, and quarrel rages between a legendary warrior and his commander. Grief ships decay, men languish, exhausted, and behind the walls of Troy, a desperate people awaits the next turn of fate. This is the Iliad, an ancient story of enduring power, a panorama of human lives locked in heroic struggle, a tale of devastation, waste, pity, and war. If that doesn't like sound summer to you, can we even be friends? All right, and the last category I have in this pile of beautiful, very happy summer reads is the mermaids pile. Again, I love the ocean. I love going to the ocean. I can't this year because of the situation that is happening, but we go every year. So this year I'm going by reading two books that are ocean based and mermaid based. So the first one is To Kill a Kingdom by Alexandra Cristo. This is a standalone fantasy YA novel. I know I said I wasn't going to do YA, but you know, it's this fantasy YA. It's not contemporary YA. This is probably a little mermaid retelling, you know. <laughs> Let me read the back. Princess Lyra or Lyra, I guess it's Lyra is siren royalty and revered across the sea until she is cursed into humanity by the ruthless sea queen. Ooh. Now Lyra must deliver the heart of the infamous siren killer or remain a human forever. And then Prince Elian is heir to the most powerful kingdom in the world and captain to a deadly crew of siren hunters. Oh my god, this enemy to lovers! When he rescues a drowning woman from the ocean, she promises to help him destroy siren king for good but he has no way of knowing whether he can trust her. So yeah, and also beautiful, beautiful cover. I can't, I love it. So yeah, this is a recommendation that I don't know, pirates, ocean, I wanna go to the beach, I hate pools. Doesn't anybody help hate pools? I think if you grew up near the ocean, you just automatically hate pools. That being said, the, no the last book I have to recommend, I'm sorry I don't have it with me yet because for me it's still on, how do you say that in English? Pre-order. Pre-order? Yeah, 
I think it's pre-order where you like buy it but it's not out yet so I don't have it with me yet but it's a song below water by Bethany C Morrow and as you can see the cover first of all whoever does these covers I need to like talk to them so that they can paint a mural in my house I love it when I see a book like this that has sirens of color because I always feel like are they in the Caribbean? Like the Little Mermaid. I, I remember the whole thing with the Little Mermaid when the, when I don't remember the actress's name was cast. But the thing is that the Little Mermaid, because of all of everything around her, is set in a tropic. So whatever. But anyway, let me tell you about this book. In a society determined to keep her under lock and key, Tavia must hide her siren powers. Meanwhile, Effie is fighting her own family struggles, pitted against literal demons from her past. Together, these best friends must navigate through the perils of high school's junior year. But everything changes in the aftermath of a siren murder trial that rocks the nation, and Tavia accidentally lets out her magical voice at the worst possible moment. Soon, nothing in Portland, Oregon seems safe to save themselves from drowning. It's only Tavia and Effie's unbreakable sisterhood that proves to be the strongest magic of them all how like like tell, how do you not want to read that the only the only thing the only thing that i wish it wasn't a ya i wish this was about grown women friendships because i feel we don't have a lot of grown women friendships in books in fact i'm looking at this pile and i don't think there's a single book here that it well uh this one does have grown women friendships but the other ones not really i wish there were more so uh yeah authors give me some grown up woman friendships but yeah but this book nevertheless still sounds great still sounds like it's gonna give me that tropical vibe even though it's in portland oregon which makes no sense but yeah sirens oh mermaids always make me feel very tropical and the fact that they are Black mermaids, well sorry, black sirens, I keep saying mermaids. There's no difference between sirens and mermaids in Spanish. I think that's why I sometimes get them mixed up, but anyway. So yeah, these are the books that I recommend that you pick up for the summer. I was gonna include Dune in here, but I recommend you read Dune whenever, okay? I always recommend Dune, and I think you're tired of seeing Dune in my channel, so <laughs> I'm gonna stop. <laughs> anyway. So these are the books that I recommend you read during the summer. I think they will give you the awesome summer vibes without it having to be a YA contemporary romance or just a contemporary romance in general. So if you have any plans to read any non-YA, non-contemporary, <laughs> non-romantic books for the summer, please leave them down below so that I can take a look so that I can add more to my list. And without further ado, I thank you so much for coming to my video. And I remind you that I post every Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And of course, I bid you adieu. And I will see you in another galaxy far, far away. Thank you guys for watching. Bye. Yeah, that's right. Another dance party. Come on, join in. It's summer. Oh, God. I fucking hate summer. <laughs>